Good morning, everyone. I'm here to talk about uh, uh, Blender for mobile VR. And first, I'd, I'd like to thank for this opportunity. It's a pleasure to talk to this audience. And I am Diego Azulay. I am developer. I'm here also with Bruno Oliveira, it's 3D art, and Carlos Silva, which are also a 3D artist. We work on a company located in Manaus, which is the capital city of Amazon State, which is north of Brazil. And before you ask, it's very far from Rio de Janeiro and São Paulo. Yeah, we work on a company called Cydia, which is a, it's a r and institute financed by Samsung. We mainly develop uh, VR and AR mobile applications. And some of the work we made there includes Kepler Pathfinder, which is a VR game, Gallery VR, which is the the main gallery application of the Samsung devices. Uh, look to the sky, which is a relaxing experience for v also VR. Games that we made today, we, we have a, a small studio, a small game studio in there, which is called uh, Black River Studio. The games that Made there includes Rock and Rails, Jack and Test Find Monsters, and Angst. One of the tools that we use there it's called GiveVR Framework, which is a framework to create VR and AR applications for Android. And this tool was made with a uh, a partnership between the SRA and CIDIA. SRA is the R&D Institute of the Samsung in the United States. This is a, a video showing what we made there using Blend and GVRF. VRF was made with the focus on mobile. It's very performatic on mobile devices. It's, uh, it has a easy to use API and simple. It's open source and you can download the source code and, and work with it and add features. It's very permissive license. And one of the tools that we made using GVR, GVRF and Blender was an uh, exporter. The motivation to make this tool, it's when you're working with an art, artist team and development team, the cycle is the artist has made some meshes and textures and animations, and when they're done, they send to the programmers. And we test the in the in the device, and 
these tools, Blender, Maya, 3D tools, it's, the engine is kind of different from the engine of the, of DVRF or Unit, an engine that you use to build the applications. And because this tool has this discrepancy, when the artist came in and see what you, you, what is running on the device, they look, oh, this is not that I want. It's a bit different. The spectral light is not right. And then they get back to the artist tool, like Blender, made some changes on, on their, on the materials and sent back to us. Then we test again and the cycle repeats. So we think, is there any way that you can make the artists look in, in the final platform? How the scene will, will be, how the final user will see the, the application? So we made this, this Blender add-on to accelerate the pipeline of application development and made it easy for the artist team to, to see the scene or, or the same way the, the final user will see. These are a print of the, the exported the UI. And the features that the, the, this add-on has, it's the, they can export meshes with textures and armature animations. And you can spot lights and cameras. So you can build the scene on Blender and see on the final device, on the mobile. Uh, it has some configurations like the, the scale that want to export. To, you can delete and, and clear the scene on the, the device, and so you can export only one or two or the entire scene of the Blender to the, the mobile. Okay. And uh, as you can see, there's some configuration there called use matcap. One of the problems that we had is the when you export the entire scene, the, the texture is somewhat heavy and it takes some time to, to, to load the scene on the phone. So we had an idea to use the matcap shader so you can use one texture for all the meshes that you had so you can see the, the, the scene on the device very fast. And Bruno, Bruno now is showed an example of the use of the, the tool and talk more about the Arctic side. Hi everyone, my name is Bruno Oliveira. I'm one of the 3D artists at CD. And um, I'm going to show you guys, um, uh, I'm going to talk about the, a little bit of our pipeline and uh, how we approach of um, exporting things to GVRF and also how we approach things um, generally for mobile VR. Um, yeah, so um, this, um, like my friend Azulai here said, um, we develop uh, add-on um, for GVRF because the GVRF now it's just a framework that um, it's for developers. We did have uh, RS2, we didn't have an editor. So um, while I was working with them, I, I have a need of see what, what I'm doing because <laughs> I didn't know what, what, what is going on after the, uh, me sending the files to them. So the problem was, um, you know, uh, it happened a lot of uh, animation issues and a lot of uh, things that we didn't know about the, the, at the time. 
And um, after that, we decided to make an uh, add-on for Blender because, you know, if, if both are open source, so why we can not do that? So, yeah. So I'm going to show you a video on just how quickly the, um, uh, the add-on works. And um, so, oh, choose. And then, yeah. So the video is not playing. Why? You choose? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is uh, just a quick demonstration how the plugin works. Um, you have a Blender screen with your, you know, um, your objects, and we use that pretty much for uh, UX uh, validation because in VR we need to know um, the distance of the objects first, and we need to know how they will appear in, the, in your scenes. And um, so in GVRF, we didn't have that um, available. So we need in, in somehow um, make it work. So yeah, this is how the plugin works. You just uh, upload your scene. Can you just play it again? Just. Yeah, this is in Blender. So you have your scene and just, you know, you can just act activate layers to, to see what's going on and just click export. And if you are, um, if you are set things up correctly, um, my friend Azlai here will show you how the, the, the GVR uh, plugin works um, for, you know, how the export, the export pipeline works. Um, um, it just, you know, we have your mobile phone, and um, if you're uh, in a Wi-Fi uh, network, it will take uh, just the IP address of your mobile phone, and it will export to a server. And, um, and then the add-on works just um, doing the, um, you know, the cloud thing which is um, the, the port, and um, then you send the device. Um, you, want, you want to talk about it? No? Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is where I started. Um, uh, developing for mobile VR. Um, when I started in Studio, I didn't know anything about uh, mobile phones at all. Uh, I mean, I know they... Um, they have uh, a game studio called Black River, which was pretty much familiar with mobile platforms. But uh, when I did the art test for them, I just made uh, you know, one character, and uh, that, ca that, that character should work pretty much in any uh, mobile phone device, which is you know a low poly count and no um, no um, uh, multiple uh, pass shaders. It uh, you know it's with what, just one texture and just the, you know, the, the mesh. So when I started in Cydia, I, uh, I really, uh, I try to get in this world of the mobile devices. And what I mean by that, I was working as a character artist before. And as a character artist, I just trying to make everything look pretty as much as I can. And uh, in mobile phones, it's not possible to do that um, uh, all the time. Um, if you want, if you have some, you know, a character with multiple shaders and multiple textures, it just won't work because if you have, you know, two um, characters in the same scene, it will take the same uh, process power of an entire uh, entire scene with multiple characters and everything. So. When I started that, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that uh, there's too much of, uh, it was an uh, optimization process that we have to do. And uh, yeah, um, so it came to the topic of optimizing for Gear VR. And in Gear VR, we have, um, it's really restrict, restricted uh, in the um, uh, graphic wise speaking because you can't do like, if you want to put a line in your scene, it's just, you know, you can put a line in your scene, but uh, it can't be dynamic. It can't be, uh, it has to be baked. It, it has to be, you know, optimized for um, 60 FPS. 
and it has to be um, it has to be you know really optimized for you know two render buffers and um, uh, some of the guys that I know, uh, they start uh, working with characters and they add some materials and some uh, things that uh, in the final um, in the final project didn't work. And I, I really didn't know why it was not working. And um, it would take a time to know what's going on in uh, in GiveYard because um, there's so many things that we didn't know and um, the uh, mobile pipeline was you know even though the mobile pipeline was there to um, for us in Syria, we didn't know how much optimize things really well for um, gear VR as uh, ours. So uh, I really did a research for um, uh, gear VR, and uh, what I find was in the Oculus page they have some. Uh, pretty much everything that you need to know to optimizing things for Gear VR. If you are an um, uh, environment artist or you are a, a character artist, um, you really need to know those things because it really gets uh, influenced in your final project. Um, for example, poly count is not uh, the only deal with uh, you know anything because uh, the thing is um, the um, the Gear VR is just works with um, uh, 100,000 uh, triangles. Um, you know, it's, it can, it can, you can go um, a little up with that, but um, it's really not recommended um, because uh, depending on the uh, device you are aiming for, like an S8 or an S9, it could be a little above, but um, in, generally, in general, you have to maintain 60 FPS with, with uh, 100,000 triangles. Um, for that, you already know that the, the poly count has to be, in the final project, 100,000 triangles for a scene. So we can, um, we can go uh, you know, every above of that because it won't work at all. So texture size uh, is a really good uh, puzzle to solve because you know, when, st when you start batching everything, when you start to put everything in a single object um, uh, to make sure that the, also the draw calls not uh, working properly because uh, draw calls is really an issue for mobile phones. So when we start that, you really realize that the texture sizes, it got bigger and bigger because if you are imagine like uh, 1K texture for one object, 10 objects, it ten, uh, it's could be a 10,000, um, uh, sorry, a 10K texture. So uh, uh, this is the problem won't work. And also, um, if you are using too much high res texture, the phone get hotter and hotter, and you can't um, get a you know a good experience with that uh, because the user you won't feel comfortable by using a you know a. a a horror device in, the, in his face. So, and the draw calls is pretty much uh, the you know the time the CPU has to calculate all the GPU information. So uh, when in, in give VR we didn't uh, we can't go uh, very much above uh, 15 draw calls because draw calls it's really heavy for uh, VR. Um, that's why batching is so important if you are a, uh, if you are a Unity user. Um, in GVIF, we can't, we didn't have the, the tools that Unity has, so the draw calls, I need to know what, um, what's, what's present in the scene and how the distance uh, f um, it was from the camera. So if I knew that, I pretty much, knew that um, the draw calls for you know the uh, the background can be uh, really less than the, the ones for the foreground with the the, the camera was uh, was moving around so you know you can put 15 draw calls in your scene but make sure that the draw calls are really uh, you know as a group of meshes with uh, sharing the same texture UV and uh, 
yeah, if you do that, you don't have too much problems with row calls. If you get the number, if you get the how uh, you are seeing your spread with objects, you can just do that. And alpha elements, it's really um, a thing that can drop your frame rate in VR because the render um, uh, the render order for alpha elements is, is really different from uh, the mesh elements. So um, the alpha elements, uh, they tend to render uh, back to front. And um, when it does that, uh, the alpha elements can't fill your scene with a uh, few uh, uh, with few elements with, you know, it can get really quickly the the performance get, uh, you know, a really big issue with that because, you know, if you're, you can have 100,000 polygons in your scene, you can have, you know, 15 draw calls, but you have one plane and one single alpha texture uh, with occupying the whole area of the camera, the whole scene, uh, your frame rate will drop uh, below 60. It's really crazy. Though. And um, the shaders, I pretty much, I did uh, everything the, the sh was shadeless because um, if you put a, a dynamic light in your scene, you, you take, you know, uh, for any uh, engine that runs in VR, it's really heavy to have a, to has a dynamic light in your scene. So I, what I did, I pretty much bake all the lights. So the shader, I can't get really excited about. I can't do much of a, okay, okay, thank you. Um, I can't go pretty much with no, no, no normal maps and also uh, uh, a lot of uh, texture work because I can't do pretty much anything with that. So yeah. And overdraw is just uh, things that, uh, the order of the how the scene are rendered in the mesh pipeline. So if you are has too much overdraw, uh, if you have too much meshes that it's um, in a line in your scene, you have too much overdraw, so it causes problems as well. So sometimes we use uh, render uh, offline render instead of uh, real time render because it's more cheaper. So we can do like a background image for. Um, our applications like the gallery one. And also we did some uh, tests with the offline render. So this is the, the type of characters we can do with offline rendering. And um, you know, it's really far away from the camera. So the background is just rendered with this, ca this character. So we can put a lot, of, a lot of detail on it. And instead of using three, real 3D objects, we can render them in cycles or we can use any offline rendering to get, you know, um, just a parallax map or just, uh, you know, uh, alpha texture, it's really far away from the camera. So we can put, uh, no, the, the, a lot of details on it because it, it won't cost anything, so yeah. And uh, yeah, this is just the Oculus recommendation for the Gear VR. It has to be a 60 FPS, the comfort distance uh, for uh, elements that is really near to the camera is really, uh, you know, five meters away. And um, you, you can't get uh, a little low or far from that, but the, the recommendation uh, from Oculus is five meters. And also because there is an effect called cross-side, if your objects are too uh, near to the camera, uh, it tends you know, it tends to look at, um, it, it will be this, the, the focal points of the scene. So your eyes will be crossed and you get dizzy because your eyes will be crossed all the time. So it, yeah, yeah this is a really big problem as well. A camera animation, the camera animation, it, uh, we really uh, tend not use too much camera animations because when camera is moving, it's like your head is moving without your body and that's make your dizzy as well, and that get the discomfort. Um, so the, ho the whole experience has to be as smooth as, far as possible. Um, and if you have any issue with that, Oculus, the Oculus Store, you'll probably not accept your app and not accept your game. So yeah, the Oculus requirements, and this is the devices we uh, tested. Uh, you can, when you upload your app for, um, Gear VR, it has the option to upload for Node 4 uh, and go on, and um, but you can refuse if you want, and you can start for that 6. So if you have a really demanding scene and you 
want to restrict just the Node 4, you can. So that's it, and thank you very much.